Hey, this is Ralph. I'm back at this database I was working on, and this is kind of a weird way to display this, but I've got kind of two separate databases within one database file, because I really want to emphasize the relationships of these tables. So my first example, I've got classes, grades, and students. A class can be taken by many students, and one student can take many classes. That's a many-to-many -many relationship, and I'm resolving that with this grades junction table here this associative entity, this third table which breaks up the many-to-many -many relationship. And this is also where I can keep track of data um, like grades where it's dependent on both the class information and the student information. So instead of a many-to-many -many relationship, I have two one-to-many relationships. A class ID is very unique in the classes table. It will only occur once per class. But in the grades table, the class ID can be seen multiple times. Student ID is unique in the students table, but in the grades table, it can be done multiple times. Let me give you a quick example of this. And what's going to really clarify this for you is when you start to see a little bit of data inside of these tables. So I'm going to go ahead and close my relationships window for now. I'll save changes if prompted. And I'm going to just jump over to students real quick. And I'm going to make up some students here. Student name, um, 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 um. Brenda, uh, student two, Brian, student three, Bryn, student four, Barry, student five, Belinda. All right. So I've got my students, and they all have unique student IDs, one through five. Now I'm going to go to my classes table. And I'm going to create some classes here. And I'm going to have a class, um, let's see, class one, how about the good old basket weaving? What about a class on access? But I'm not even spelling access right. What about a class on uh, HTML and CSS? And what about a class on running? OK. So now I've got four classes. And I'm going to jump over to my grades table real quick. And I've got, a, I've got fields already for um, Grade ID, student ID, class ID. Let me go ahead and create it quick. Grades or grade, and I'll just put in um, um, uh, text. That's fine. And in fact, I'll change my field size to one. So I'll just put a letter in there. Okay. So now that I've got this information, I can start to put in some data. So my grades table. Okay. So field size one. So now I can jump over here to data sheet view, save the table, of course, and now I can put in some realistic data. Remember, I have five students and I have um, four classes. So I could say, all right, no worries. I can say student one took class one and earned an A. Student one took class three and earned a B. Student one earned class, took class four and took a, um, and got a D. Um, and I must have screwed up somehow. Class ID. Do I have a class ID? I do have four classes, right? I'm getting a little error message. Let me go and show this to you. You cannot add or change a record because a related record is required in the table classes. I've set referential integrity, so I must be breaking some kind of rule here. So let me click OK. Look at my classes table real quick. Oh, you know what? I never pressed Enter on that. So it didn't th It didn't know that I had a fourth class. So let me save that. So now I should shouldn't have a problem here. But I'm glad you saw that happen. Because I've already got my relationships established with referential integrity enforced, it would not let me create a record and refer to a class if that class wasn't known to exist. So student one took three classes. Student two took one class. And they took class two, and they earned an A. Student three took class four, and they got an A. Student three took class two and earned an A. So basically, what I want to point out now is that we can create this table. In the grades table, student ID is not a good primary key, clearly because of the duplication. I see number one there several times. Number three there is a couple times. Class ID would not be a good primary key because of the duplication. Um, by the way, you might hear of a composite key. I mentioned that term a few videos back. I'm not going to use a composite key, but we could, in theory, make classes, I'm sorry, we could make student ID, class ID combined into a primary key, because you'll notice there's no combination that's the same. Don't worry about that too much if that was tricky. But for now, just know, student ID by itself, not a good primary key in the grades table. Class ID, not a good primary key in the grades table. So that's why we have that grade ID there. And now we've got this information. 
we could actually start to run queries and reports based on this. If I want to get a listing of all students who took a particular class, well, I would go to the grades table and look for all students that referenced class number four. I'd use their student ID to look up their name, and then I could display their name and their grade, all that information. So that's the value of this related table. I can go and close these, save changes if prompted. I don't have to change anything, though, about the relationships between these tables. Let's try something with books and authors real quick. So let me head open, I'll open up my books table and my authors table and my books authors table. So for books, I do have some books available, but I think to go fast, I'll just say um, book north, book south, book east, book west, okay? For authors, Jane, John, Jenny, and Jim, okay? So I've got several books and I've got several authors. Now for books authors, book one was written by author one. Book two was written by author one. Book two was also written by author three. Book three was written by author three. And book four was written by author four. So I have an author who hasn't written any books yet. No worries. It's not violating any rules to have an author in the database. And what is it telling me here? You cannot add or change a record because a related record is required in table book. So once again, I'm making my little mistakes where I'm not pressing my enter key after that last one. So now I can put the four in there. Got to make sure my books, yeah, yeah, yeah. Going too fast here, let me press enter there. Now I'm legit, all right. So you can have an author in your author's table, even if they're not associated with a particular book yet. Maybe they're in the process of writing it or something, who knows. Um, or maybe the book's no longer available, but you know you want to still keep the author referenced. But once again, just like with students and classes, book ID is not a good primary key because duplicates are possible. Author ID is not a good primary key because duplicates are possible. And this is something that's resolving that many-to-many -many relationship. So if I go back to my relationships window, one book can have multiple authors, one author can write multiple books, many-to-many. -many. So we use this associative entity to break that up. So I have my books author ID representing the unique combinations of books and authors.